Good evening and welcome back to another week of In the Spotlight. Thank you for joining me and I am your host of In the Spotlight, Tabitha Collins. And this evening we are very honored and um, very uh, pleased to have Major Cheryl Kinnaman yes. on our show. She is the Major from the Salvation Army to, to Topeka, Washington, no, Tacoma. Location. Tacoma, Washington location, Tacoma, mm -hmm. Washington location. So even though we are here in the great state of North Carolina, um, we are global, as you know, all of our audience knows, and we like to share um, the joy throughout the social media platforms and share this information for all to see because who do you how you know someone might not be watching this in Washington and did not know that you guys were there. So just so again welcome to the show. We thank you for joining us and, and sharing this time with us this evening. Um, so we're just going to get a deep dive in from the start and just give us a little history of a brief little history of Salvation Army as a whole. And then um, let's talk about a little history of the Red Kettles, if we can. Okay, so uh, the Salvation Army has been around for a very long time. It started in London, England by a Methodist minister named um, William Booth and his wife, Catherine, um, in 1865. Then they came to the United States and we have Salvation Armies in all of the United States. Um, every time zone or every zip code, we like to say uh, there is, we have Salvation Army services. Um, William Booth felt the need to um, help uh, those who were uh, out on the streets, whether they were uh, drunkards or whether they were prostitutes or homeless, he saw a need and so he went to his church members and he asked them, um, uh, you know what, I wanna do this. He, he helped some of them get out, off the street, get them jobs, uh, change their lives around. And then he wanted to send them back. His purpose was to send them back to their own churches. Well, guess what? Their churches knew Joe as the drunkard or Susie as the prostitute mm -hmm. and they didn't want um, them or didn't welcome them, I should say, back into their congregation. So that's, he started up what was called the Christian mission at that time. And then um, it eventually became the Salvation Army and it is a church. Uh, we do, I'm an ordained minister. My husband is an ordained minister in the Salvation Army. So we do all the church activities, but we also do many social um, justice kind of activities like mm. uh, food boxes. Um, we pay rent and, uh, and shelter. We actually have a shelter here in uh, Tacoma, Washington, where we house people. So um, his mission was to serve those uh, who uh, were um, uh, his mission was to serve those who were lost and um, to uh, bring them a, about back into uh, full, um, what do I want to say? His mission was to uh, serve those who others wouldn't serve. And he wanted to serve them without discrimination. And so it didn't matter where you came from, who you were. Um, if you needed a bed to sleep in or a, a, a cup of soup, he was willing to uh, give that to you. And that's and that's um, extraordinary for that time and day and age mm -hmm. to, to have that um, com compassion. And that just goes to show, you know, you know what the love of Christ can do for you. you know? And um, so you kicked off, I know we have the red kettles and that's a signature uh, symbol in the Salvation Army. Everyone knows uh, you go to the Walmart, you go to the grocery stores and you have people out ringing the bells at the holidays with the red kettle. Um, first of all, um, let's speak about a little bit about the overall red kettle and where that came from. I know you know, it's, you know, raising funds to continue to, you know, to move towards the mission. But also, I want to make sure that people that especially that might be in your local area, understand that you all kicked that off yesterday. And it goes through November 18th at 6pm uh, in within your time zone. So give us a little brief history on the red kettle, um, since it's such a signature uh, 
uh, symbol in the Salvation Army, and then also uh, let them know about your own ringing the bell season there in your state. So uh, the red kettle is something that, yes, we're all with the Salvation Army is well known for, right? It has been around for a um, hundred and some years. It started in Oakland, California, believe it or not. There was a captain who needed to feed a thousand people on Christmas morning, and he had no money to do that, no resources. Mm -hmm. So he took this big black kettle out by the ferry uh, docks. And as people were getting off the ferries, he collected money. He had a sign that said, keep the pot boiling. And he was able to raise enough money um, from that, that uh, day to feed the thousand people that he was hoping to feed a Christmas dinner to. So from that came the red kettle, which is well known throughout uh, the United States and Europe and, and a few other countries, but especially here in the United States, like you said, outside of the grocery stores, outside the Walmarts. And that's uh, the red kettle season is our biggest fundraising season of the year. That's where we get a majority of our money to do the programs that we do, whatever community we're in. So something that probably important for your um, uh, viewers to know is that every community has to raise their own money. We don't get money, even though we're an international um, organization, we don't get money from the uh, international or national uh, headquarters. We oh, wow. have to raise our own money to do the programs that we do. So if we don't raise the money, that means we cut, have to cut programs to our community. So the community really supports, uh, has to support the community, the programs that the Salvation Army does. So that, that's really important for you to know. And so the red kettle season is, of course, the biggest um, fundraiser that we have. Here in um, uh, Tacoma, we raise over $200,000 doing that. And um, that money goes in to support all the programs that we do here. We have a 24-7 a, uh, shelter, family shelter where we house families, we house uh, some singles and single men and single women also at the shelter. We have what we call the SHIELD Center, which is our social service um, center where um, clients can come and get their rent paid, they get utilities uh, help if they need help, utilities help. We have a food bank here and we have a food pantry. The difference between the food bank is the food bank is where we collect, it's a warehouse where we collect all the food and we also provide to other agencies here in uh, Tacoma as well as our own food pantry uh, uh, that we uh, give out food uh, four times a week. It's about 300 food boxes a week that we give out uh, oh. of food to family. And then we also um, have what we call no cook bags, which are just bags that we can give to people who don't have, who obviously are living on the street, who don't have a place to cook their food, right? So it's, it's um, food that they can just take and eat from there. You know, I am so glad we did this show. I had no idea. I mean, you hear about the Salvation Army, you know you all are there, and we have a general idea of what we think that you all do. But um, and I have and I have a I can't even I don't even have time on this show to tell you how incredibly passionate I am and know that I am called to be a service in the community to those that are less fortunate than me. I can't, I don't even got time to tell you. I tell you off, I got to tell you off camera how, <laughs> how, how what this does for my whole soul. But anyway, um, I am so glad you guys are on because I had no idea. Um, and that all that you, that all that the Salvation Army really did. And I don't think anybody else knew. And I hope now that this show is airing and when it does air that everybody that walks past thinks before they walk past I should say a red kettle thank you and um so tell them about your own personal kickoff there in your area so, so 
On Friday night, the 18th, we are having our kettle kickoff. We're doing it at our local Kroger store, Fred Myers, what it's called out here in Tacoma. And they're very supportive of us. We, um, they give us uh, food. They uh, just are overwhelmingly kind to us at Christmas time. Um, anyway, so we're, we're going to go there. We have our little band that's going to play Christmas carols. Santa's playing, coming, coming to uh, visit. He's going to actually bring the first gifts of Christmas because one of the things we do at Christmas is give toys out to um, families who are in need and we collect all those toys and Fred Myers, one of those uh, stores that helps us collect these toys. They're all donated and um, we're just gonna ring in the Christmas season and start off our kettles on uh, Friday night, the 18th at six o'clock. And let me tell you audience, please do not miss this. Spread the word, like and share our show. It's in the spotlight. We have the Salvation Army with us. We have the major who's taken out her time out of her busy schedule to share with us what all um, the Salvation Army does within our whole United States and in her local area. We are about to break for commercial, but when we come back, we are going to share with you all of the locations within Washington uh, that the Salvation Army has, and we'll dig a little deeper into what they do with the holidays uh, uh, at Christmas. And I know there's plenty of people out there that do not celebrate Christmas, but it doesn't mean that you cannot share a spirit of giving because the, the idea around this for me is that we're, we're helping someone who they, they cannot help themselves. So that's why we're here. That's why we're shining the light on the Salvation Army, because I am all about sharing the good news and sharing the compassion that even though we're in a world that doesn't seem like we have too much of it anymore, but I'm all about this show and sharing the compassion that we have here at WYTV7.org for our, for our human beings in the community. So sit back and we will see you in a minute after this commercial break. Hello, my name is Kevin Washington. And for over 30 years, I've committed myself to the skill set of grant writing in the name of serving those communities most vulnerable. And now I'm going to pass this on to you. So whether you're a beginner working in your own nonprofit or you want to work at your own pace to learn more about grant writing, Excellence Academy is just for you. So don't delay. I'll see you in the classroom. And welcome back. And thank you again for joining us for another Spotlight with Tabitha. I am Tabitha. And if you were on before our break, you know that we are interviewing um, Major Cheryl with the uh, uh, Salvation you know Army. What? I couldn't think. <laughs> yes, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't think, but Major, with the Salvation Army. And uh, we left off. I was so in awe. I was just like trying to process it all and everything and all the wonderful, wonderful services that the Salvation Army has. Now here on the second half, we wanna just dive in quick. Um, what are all of the um, ta uh, Tacoma locations? Is that, what I, is that what we want? Like all of the areas in Tacoma that have services? for the Salvation Army so our audience will know um, when they're in that general area. And we're gonna share this show with that general area. Okay, so um, I think what you wanna know is what we actually do, the services that we provide here in yeah, Tacoma. Yeah, what are the Salvation Army of Tacoma services, yeah. Okay, so I, I think we talked about this in the first half, but we do have the food bank in the food pantry. Did we talk about that in the first half? No, I think what I was trying to get as like, um, I'm, some of my talking points, I see that you have locations like, um, She's probably talking about kettle locations. Yeah, yeah. Is that Is what it, you're talking about? I think okay. it's kettle locations. Oh, okay, so about. you want to know, so if somebody wants to put some money into the red kettle, yeah. um, we have locations at our Fred Meyer stores here in Tacoma. We have a location at um, our, okay, where I got to figure this out. Where, oh, okay, so we have, 
locations at uh, our Fred Meyer stores here in um, Tacoma. We have uh, locations at our Safeway stores. Okay. Our Walmarts, our two Walmarts also have um, kettles outside. Uh, our Bass Pro Shop, our, um, uh, oh yes, Hobby Lobby also has um, a uh, kettle outside of it. And we have some of our stores because it's really difficult right now to find employees. Even kettle um, employees or volunteers yeah. to get out there and and um, ring the bell for us. So we we have both volunteer and uh, kettles are paid uh, workers at our and it's hard to get people out there. And so we come up with the idea of doing what we call a manless kettle this year. And we've actually taken one of our stands to one of the stores that we've worked with for for years, and we made a life size uh, cardboard. Uh, kettle with uh, our QR code where you can go on and donate online. Yeah. Okay, and so great. those are also around um, Tacoma. You might, they might, people from Tacoma might see those also out there. So we're in lots of places. You should be hearing that bell ringing really soon. And what about the safety of the kettle bell workers? How, how is that? Uh, we haven't really had any issues with that mm -hmm. here in Tacoma. Um, we've not had any of our kettles stolen. We've uh, so uh, I should knock on wood because that's not true in every location. Okay. Um, so, but you know they're pretty secure. They're right up in front by uh, the front door of most stores, and so they do have. And most of our stores out here have security. So, um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there looking to take advantage of a kettle worker because oftentimes we have elderly people who are standing kettles um, right. and or people who, you know, um, just need a little, uh, that they don't, can't, um, they can't fight back. And of course I wouldn't want them to anyway, right? I would right. want them to keep themselves safe. Uh, the biggest thing here, I guess, is keeping warm. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you guys are still collecting actual money. Everybody doesn't have a QR code, right? Right, right, right. So mm -hmm. yes, we actually have live kettles. Yes, okay. where you can go uh, to the store and put your money in the kettle. Yes. Okay. And and um, do you uh, go out yourself at all? I do. It's not my favorite thing to do. I'll be honest with you, but um, because I'm doing. Uh, I used to, when my children were home, or if my children come to visit me at Christmas time, we do do a family kettle where we okay. go and stand um, the kettle for, a, a, well, one year we just took shifts because there are so many of us that we did a whole day at one kettle. Oh, um, nice. So we did do that, but I do have staff members who do it with their families um, who go out and stand at the kettle and ring it as a volunteer because the more volunteers that we have, uh, the more money we keep, of course, because we're not paying a, a pay someone to stand the kettle. Do you know if that's something that if like, let's say a family um, in our local areas wanted to say, stop by their local Salvation Army and say, hey, I'd like to donate some time and me and my family would like to give back and we want to go out and stand and, you know, ring the bell and do a kettle donation, you could? I'm more than a hundred percent sure that they would welcome that. Okay. I don't know what their process would be, um, but certainly calling their local Salvation Army and saying, "Hey, I really would like to help you at Christmas time, and I, uh, my family and I would like to stand um, at a kettle," um, and um, I'm sure that they'll hook them up real fast. Okay, and I want to just move on quickly. Um, to the holidays, and even though everyone doesn't celebrate Christmas, for the people that do, and even if you don't celebrate Christmas, again, we're saying here, it's about giving to people that are less fortunate than ourselves. So it's really about that and not so much the emphasis on Christmas per se. But for the ones that do, um, I know that you have an angel tree program, because I remember bringing the angel tree program to my 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 place of work at one point having it set up and we we made sure that the people at the job you know picked the name off the tree mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. of that nature so how does a family sign up for christmas for help 
So uh, a family, at least out here in the Western Territory, we use what we call Angel Tree, um, saangeltree.org. It's a, a, a website that you go to and you actually sign up, you put in your um, zip code. And I know that a lot of other communities, even back East, use this program, whether your local one does or not, I'm not sure. But that's mm -hmm. certainly by putting your zip code in there, it would take you to that Salvation Army site. And there's a little form that you have to fill out and it will tell you what what you require, what they require in order to sign up. For instance, out here in Tacoma, we require that you have ID for everybody in the household and um, you have proof of address so that we know that you're uh, part of Pierce County, which is, that's our county, um, and um, that you live here in Tacoma, because we're not going to, you know, serve somebody in Seattle, because there's another Salvation Army that serves people in Seattle, and um, anyway, so it it will take you through some things, but some, some Salvation Armies require uh, income uh, verification or uh, proof of, yeah, proof of income, whether, how much you make, but out here, we, I, we just don't do that. I don't do that. I feel like if somebody comes to me and is says they're in need, I just take that at face value and and believe that if they they want to sign up and put all their work the work into coming and standing in line and getting a few toys that we give them, then they they deserve it. And um, and we don't necessarily, you know, not everybody who comes to us actually um, celebrates Christmas but they okay. know we're giving toys away. So they, they come in and they, they're welcome. We, we, it, it doesn't matter to us. This is our season of giving. That's because we're Christians and we believe in, in giving uh, at Christmas time. So um, we, we do have uh, people of other faiths that don't celebrate Christmas, but they do receive gifts from us because they sign up for their children. And before we wrap up, um, how are those toys distributed and what are the uh, the dates like what are the what's the time frame that people um, can can do that what are some of the other events happening around Christmas and then the last thing I'll ask you is how um, people can um, donate um, within the community and how people can volunteer those are the those are the follow, the follow-up questions that I want to okay. ask <laughs> Okay. In, in the most briefest way we can get there. <laughs> so we do a distribution day. It is uh, December 22nd this year. And what we do is we take all those applications and we fill bags and people, we do actually a drive through where they come. We look at, find their bag and we take it out and put it in their car. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So if people want to donate, they can either go to um, our uh, website, which is tacoma.salvationarmy.org and just follow the prompts and you'll be able to donate. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. You can see what we're doing. Uh, we're doing lots of things, but a lot more than we talked about at facebook.com Salvation Army Tacoma. You're gonna wanna make sure you put that or you can also go to the National Salvation Army website and, and donate there. But if you donate directly to the Salvation Army of Tacoma, it's easier if you go to the Tacoma website. But if you live in a different state, go to the uh, National Headquarters, uh, Salvation Army National um, website, and it will also prompt you much like ours would prompt you. And Major, before we end our broadcast on this evening, could you leave us with some encouraging words? We here at WYTV7.org um, decided on this year that um, every guest that we had on, we were going to ask them before they left to leave us some encouraging words for 2022. And since we're at the end of the year and it's the holiday season, what, what encouraging words do you have for our audience and our viewers in the uh, social media space? I just want to say, you know, if it weren't for donors, for your viewers like yours who give to the Salvation Army, who trust us with their money and their resources to do the most good, I want to say thank you because we see the faces day in and day out. And sometimes they don't change, but often um, 
people's lives are transformed because of what we do with the donations that have been given to us. So on their behalf, I want to say thank you uh, for what our donors do for us. And if I were to encourage um, uh, you, the donors or the, your viewers, it's a simple little saying that I have in my house um, that I put up in my house on a little plaque that says, in a world where you can do, be anything, be kind. And we need kindness so much more yes, in do. our world today, don't we? Among ourselves yes. and uh, 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 among our communities, even our own personal families, we need to learn to be kind to one another. Major, thank you so much for spending the time that you uh, do with us on this evening. We appreciate it. We learned so much about the Salvation Army. I learned so much that I did not know. I'm sure our viewers have. Um, so when you watch this broadcast, please, uh, audience, uh, like it, share it, uh, and share and share and share um, so we can get the word out. We can spread the word of the good news that's going on um, in Tacoma, Washington. And uh, if you want to reach me in, in the spotlight, you have a nonprofit, you have an organization that you want to get out and share um, with the uh, global world. Uh, I'm at area code 980-907-3136. That's 980-907-3136. Or just Tabitha, T-A-B-A-T-H-A. Spotlight, all one word at gmail.com. Major, thank you so much again for your time this evening. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you all are doing to the Salvation Army. God bless you and have an amazing holiday season. And again, we will share this with anyone who's willing to listen, even if they ain't willing to listen, we'll share it again anyway. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, you so that. much. Have a wonderful evening. You too.